What's good, YouTube? It's Yano back with another DIY hack on my channel. Well, this actually might be the first one ever on my channel. <laughs> if you remember last time, we built this beauty. Yeah, let's get in there and take a quick look at that. All those colors, very nice. I'm actually having a few problems with this thing. I can't quite explain or figure out, but uh, we're gonna save that for another day. This video is not about the computer. It's about boom this let's get some light on here oh there it is so in case you can't quite tell this is a sound system that used to be in my car in college that was a long time ago i'm dating myself here i think that was 2005 2006 time frame when i got this uh this sat in the trunk of my buck <laughs> uh, buick my brother called it a buck i don't know why um, but I have the idea, I've had this idea for a while now. I wanted to take this power supply, which is from Yonobox 1.0, at least the second one, and wire it up to this amp, which, you know, is supposed to go in a car. And I think I can do that. Um, yeah, there's some 12 volt cables here. I think we can splice a few of those out, put them on the power. And I think you short that to the remote port, obviously ground. And uh, then I've got these six by nines also that I'm hoping to plug up. Um, so I've been doing some research on this. I feel like I'm learning a lot. Uh, first thing I thought, you know, all this time, uh, at least back in college, that this amp drove all four of the speakers. I had, uh, what did I have? I had driver's door, passenger door. Then these actually sat in the trunk on top of this box, just like this, I think. They didn't, they didn't have their own boxes. Um, and I thought all four of those speakers plus the two subs, which I'll show you here in a second, uh, were driven all by this amp. But now that I've kind of gotten in here and looked closer at this, uh, you're probably not going to be able to see this on camera, but when I hastily ripped this out of my car before I gave it to the junkyard or cars for kidneys or whatever it was I did, um, I see wire frays on only two of the screws. And it just so happens those are the two screws in the manual that uh, show you where to connect for just powering the subwoofer. So I have a feeling that this amp only powered the subwoofer back then. And the 6x9s and car door speakers were wired directly to the head unit. So this is going to be a little different setup than that. Uh, but first things first, what kind of amp do we have here? So again, this is an old sucker. Um... Is that good? Too much glare? I don't know. It says, if you can't read it, XM2002 GTR 2 slash 1 channel stereo power amplifier. Nice. All right. Uh, nice little window here. You can see a uh, big inductor in there. And uh, look a little further back, there's the capacitor. Uh, yeah, I'm a software guy. I'm not an electrical guy, so I don't really know how this stuff works. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I've been learning a lot though. I have been doing some research. I actually bought uh, bought some components for the circuit I'm going to build, which you are going to see in the next video. Uh, let's flip this around real quick. Oh, that's not the side I wanted to show. Oh, oh this thing's kind of heavy. I need two hands for this. Oh, oh my. All right. Yeah, this is the side I wanted to show first. So, well, first of all, you can see there's two speakers here. And again, I don't really know my speakers. I think these are 12s. I think they're 12s. Definitely not 15s. Uh, Sony Explode 1000 watts. So there you go on that. But even though there's two speakers, uh, they're wired up together in this box as a single interface. Uh, you can see here maybe. Yeah, so there's just uh, these two plugins for the speakers. Uh, so I'm basically going to treat this as one speaker, or one item, even though there's two speakers in there. Uh, but yeah, that's the plan. Um, I've already ordered some components, so this is going to be a little complicated circuit. A little more complicated than I would thought. Um, basically, I'm going to hook up the 6x9s and then connect the subs in a bridged configuration. And... All the research I've done, I really haven't found a good, I guess, diagram or tutorial on how to do that. 
Uh, I really didn't learn anything about it until I found the manual for this thing and it showed a, a, a circuit diagram. But I think, uh, you know, most of the newer amps probably kind of support that. Like all the pictures and things I've seen online, they've got, you know, labels in the back for like bridge configurations and things. Um, mine does not have that. So maybe that's a relatively new thing since 2005. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, we can go over these ports real quick. We can get some light in there. Jeez, that's still dark. Um, yeah, I still don't really know quite what this is. Uh, this is like a, I think that's something for the ignition. Um, it's a fancier remote, remote cable, I think. <laughs> something to do with knowing when your car is on. Uh, so this is just RCA in here. So this is where the sound signal is going to come from. So for me, I'm just going to get a headphone jack with, uh, you know, two that splits out into two uh, left and right channels, connect them there. This is an output RCA, and for a long time I thought that was where the subwoofer connected. Uh, that's wrong. I've since learned that. <laughs> this has something to do with uh, wiring up another amp. If you have two amps, um, I think you use that to connect them. I'm not going to be doing that. Uh, these are some settings, level, low boost, uh, this is low pass filter switch, I think, which I believe is going to be set to off when I'm done. And then these are the two speaker ports, so the 6x9s are going to get wired in here. And uh, I'm going to do the bridged uh, circuit with the subwoofers. And I've uh, looked in the manual, and I think I know the components, so I spent about $70 on two big honking capacitors and a big honking inductor. <laughs> um, so I hope I'm doing the right thing there. These are two fuses uh, to protect it, I guess, for overload. And we have the remote port, the 12 volt power port, and the ground port. Um, yeah, so uh, next video, I think I'm gonna show the circuit diagram I'm trying to put together from the manual. Uh, that's gonna be a screen recording, so stay tuned for that.